Flowchat Connector, what's happening in this video? Uh, I'm curious, have you ever been at a place where a prospect's so excited, like, yes, this is perfect, we're gonna take it back, we're gonna get started with you right away, and then they ghost you? Or what about the other side of the equation when you have somebody that's saying, oh man, we would never go in the direction that you're talking about, Sean, I don't know, you're crazy. And then next week they become not only a client, but they go on to become your best client. Well, today I'm gonna break down why that happens, and I'm gonna give you some technique of how you can make it happen more frequently, more often, and what to do with those positive people that swing to the wrong side. Stay tuned. What's happening, Flowjack Connector? Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and share this out to those people that need it so we can feed the algorithm gods and get people better at sales. That's the bottom line. That's what we got to do today. I had a great question that came in from Tom. Tom asked this. He said, Sean, I have prospects who say they're, they're going to buy, but never do. And... I have prospects who told me they would never buy, but now they're my best clients. Why does this happen? And I think it's valuable to think about this process. So think back to your last like five or six or seven clients. Do you have those people who are inherently negative, but then they always become some of the best promoters, the best people, the best publishers, the best like talking about your stuff, your best clients, right? And then you have those other people that are super happy and giddy and go forward and everything else, but then they never get started with you. Well, today we're gonna break down why that actually happens. And so we're gonna talk about two concepts today. One of them is called the pendulum theory. And the other one is how to use negative reverses and sales. Negative reverses are the pinnacle, most critical, the best questioning strategy that you can ever use when it comes to sales. So let's get started. First of all, a couple of definitions. How do we use negative reverses in sales? Well, first of all, we have to have some definitions. What's a reverse? Let's start there before we get to a negative reverse. Well, a reverse is we just want a prospect asks a question. And before answering, we as the sales professional reverse the flow of the conversation by asking a question back before answering. Sounds like, huh, interesting why you just asked me that. Can I ask you why you just asked me that, right? So now if I don't know what to say as a sales professional, now I'm saying, hey, I'm reversing that to get more information so that I can give a more valid answer. Or if I need more time to talk, reverses are the baseline for great questioning when it comes to sales. And by the way, a lot of this comes from the Sandler training systems. Um, I'm very well versed in all the selling systems out there. These terms actually do come from Sandler. So I do want to give credit where credit is due. Secondly, now we know what a reverse is. It's just simply when somebody asks you something about your product or service or business and you don't answer and simply just ask them another question in exchange. In fact, I remember when I first learned this technique, my sales coach, his name is Steve, he told me, he said, look, like you got to get good at this. So when you go home, you're working with, you know, hanging out with your wife, your girlfriend, whenever they say something or they ask you a question, you need to be able to reverse it back before you answer it and try to reverse three times before you actually give an answer. And when you get good at that game, then you can start taking on the next stuff. So if you're just learning reverse as a term in sales as the first time, that's that's what it is. That's what it works, how it works. And I encourage you to play that game because that game will help you get better at questioning, better at sales, better at life, better at communication in general. And that's what we're always about. Secondly, what is a negative reverse? Well, negative reverse is asking questions, reversing, same thing, and making statements that are the opposite of what the prospect expects. Okay, so I'm going to go into some examples here in a minute so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I want to dive in now that you kind of understand this. A reverse is just a question back to that person. A negative reverse is a question back to that person saying a question that they would have never expected you to ever ask as a sales professional, typically on the wrong side of the equation. To make a little more sense out of this, let's look at this picture. This is what we call the prospect pendulum theory. It's very simple to understand. When a super negative prospect is in your world, they're sitting at that nine o'clock spot, the it's over time, and they're not ever going to buy. They don't buy when they're at nine o'clock. They do buy when they're at three o'clock. You can see how this works, right? And so when you have somebody coming your direction, that's super enthusiastic or maybe interested, even almost practically sold on your stuff. And then you start talking with them and they say, oh, this is great. This is exactly what I need. I'm just going to go back and get approval for my whatever. And they go home and then they ghost you. It's because they were so high up on the right side of that pendulum, all that momentum pushed them all the way back to nine o'clock. And then it was over. So we never got the sale. Likewise, when you have somebody that's hostile or even interested in hostile or maybe close to saying, I'll never work with you. And then you 
give them a light bulb moment, guess what happens? All that pendulum theory, that momentum in your conversation is going to swing that person back up to that three o'clock side and you're going to make a deal. So remembering how momentum works when you're talking with positive and negative emotion, it's valuable in sales. So a couple of things to remember, negative prospects swing in a positive direction, positive prospects swing in a negative direction. And so if you can remember, it's just like that inverse relationship that we talk about. Think about where your prospects coming from. So in the sales conversation, if you feel they're very positive, know that we have to go negative before they go negative. And that's the secret. If we know somebody's super negative, we have to be even more negative than they are. This is where negative reverses become super powerful. The objective is to always put yourself as the sales professional on the negative side of any one of where that pendulum is hanging down so that we can push the prospect instead of pulling the prospect, right? Most sales, traditional sales folks try to pull. Hey, this is why you should buy. It's so great. It's going to change your life. Like, come here and do this thing. Come with me. Come with me. Pull, pull, pull. Well, that's the wrong way to actually close a lot of deals versus man, that doesn't like it. Why would that work for you? And now it's the same thing said two different ways. On one side, I'm pulling. The other side, I'm pushing. And you can see the difference in the conversation when I say, well, that doesn't even make sense for you. Like, why would you even do that? And then the prospect's like, huh, no one would ever say that to me as a sales professional. This is a different conversation. And that is the secret because when you separate yourself and you're able to do that, the prospect likes you more, the rapport is stronger, and you're going to create momentum going towards that three o'clock sold position. So that is why negative reverses are the ultimate most powerful tool when it comes to questioning. Okay, so now I want to give you a few examples. Now you understand the theory that the back and forth swing uh, momentum. Check this out. Here's a big bunch of theory. So on the top left, it says at what time three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, all the way down to nine o'clock on the left of that, it says negative, neutral and positive. That means the prospect is in a positive state of emotion, neutral or negative. So the prospect in a positive state at three o'clock complete soul, they say, take it. What else can you get to me? Most traditional sales professionals will say, well, I can get it to you by Tuesday. Just sign right here on the document and we're good to go. Again, that's the pulling momentum. If you're wanting to do the negative reverse side and you want to push them, we say something like, well, I appreciate your interest. It's uh, probably not as quick as you need it, right? Um, do you want to tell me how quickly you actually need it? And when you say something like that to a prospect, they're going to be like, whoa, this person's real. Like, this is the real deal. And you can see how the the, the way you should respond slightly more negative than the, the emotion that the prospect is showing. And that's how you create push momentum in a sales conversation. Four o'clock, they're a little more enthusiastic. Hey, I've been looking for this a long time. It looks great. Oh, I didn't think you liked it at all. What do you like, right? Very obtruse, just like factual. And now it's like, oh yeah, it is great. You know, like normal traditional sales person at the four o'clock spot, when your prospect's at the four o'clock enthusiastic spot, you say, I've been looking for this a long time. It looks great. Traditional sales guy, positive, will say, pulling move, will say, yeah, it is great. Let's get started. The right way to respond is to say, ah, I didn't even think you liked it at all. What, 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 what do you like about it? And all of a sudden you're starting to create this push momentum to get them to that three o'clock sold position. Same thing, five o'clock. I have some interest. Show me what you have. Um, okay. So we're going to be a little bit more negative than I have some interest. Show me what you have. I see. I didn't think there was even a fit. Why did, what did I say that interested you? Right. And now I'm not going into presentation when someone says, show me your stuff. I'm saying, Oh, hold on. Like, I don't even think it's a fit. Like why, what did I say that was interesting to you? And the prospect now has to rescue you and start selling themselves on why your solution is the best. This is what's so powerful about negative reverse. When a client's neutral, and I'm going to go back one side because I want to share this. When a prospect is sitting at that six o'clock timeline on the neutral, they're not positive or negative in emotion. Those are the most difficult prospects to sell. Why? Because they don't have momentum, right? A positive prospect has positive momentum that's gonna swing negative and then swing back positive, that's it, right? So it's a little bit longer sales cycle for those prospects that are super happy and fun. And it's a little shorter of a sales cycle for those people that are negative or hostile or disinterested because they already are on the right side of the spectrum of the pendulum so they can swing up to that three o'clock side. But those people at six o'clock, you have to do a little bit more work to start that thing swinging back and forth and eventually you can swing it up to the sold position at three o'clock. So let me think it over is neutral answer from a prospect. We never want to get that. Let me think it over. And so if you're a traditional sales pro when some or a traditional salesperson saying and you get the let me think it over. Sure. Cool. How long do you need? Oh, I need this time. Okay, cool. Should we meet up again later? Yeah, cool. And then they ghost you or they whatever happens. The right way to do it is say, Oh, man, I understand. Uh, you wouldn't tell me which part you're going to think over, would you? It's not me. If it is it me? Is it our company? Is it is it the product or service that's going to be a match for you? Like, what's the thing you want to think over here so we can like actually have clarity on this thing. And what I've done now is I've gone 
gone a little bit more negative than the six o'clock prospect. And I've started to push them in the positive direction to see if I get more resistance or less resistance. And then they're going to start telling me what part they want to think over. And I'm back in the conversation having more questions about getting them to swing. Maybe they're like, oh, that's I love this part. But then I hate this part. Oh, then oh, that's how you deal with that. Okay, cool. Sold. Right. And so that's how you take the six o'clock. You got to start momentum. You swing one way, back way, back way. How many times it takes to get them to sold? Seven o'clock. The disinterested. Hey, we already have a coach. Maybe if you're selling coaching services. So if they're disinterested and they're already telling you, like, hey, we're set. We don't even, we already have a coach. Well, as a traditional salesperson, most people just discount that and move on to the next one. What I encourage you to do is become the sales pro that says, you'd never consider using another coach, would you? Is that right? And all of a sudden, I've been more negative than them. And I've pushed them in the direction of is there any gaps that we can talk about that are going to make sense for you to look at having another coach or not, right? And so that's the way to start pushing them in the right direction. Eight o'clock when somebody says here, we've had a bad experience, you people have messed up our account in the past, right? So they're angry, they're hostile at you. Maybe you've worked with them before the traditional sales guy says, Oh, my gosh, well, what can I do to make you happy? And they're pulling you in that direction as the prospect to become happy. And then now you have to do all this energy and work and effort as a prospect or the client because you now have to tell them what they need to do for you. That's not how it should work in a sales conversation. When somebody says, we've had a bad experience, you people have messed up our account in the past, the better way to answer this is say, um, and you've already decided that you, if you were to do, do business with us, we'd probably mess it up again. Is that is that the decision that you've made? And now I'm leading that person by pushing them in the right direction saying, look, like it sounds like it's over. Should we just call it quits and move forward? Like, uh, is, is there even any even hope of possibly probably saving this? But probably not, right? Negative reverse to that move, right? And then the last one is nine o'clock. It's over. Take me off your list. We've been working with the same coach for 10 years and we're not interested in switching. Whew. That's a tough one to come back as a traditional salesperson. Most people would just close the file and move on. What I encourage you to do is ask maybe one or two more questions saying, so let me get this right. You would never under any circumstances consider even going with another coach or looking at what another coach has to offer. Is that is that a fair statement? And now I've gone even more negative than the nine o'clock hostile person. And I can start to push that momentum because that nine o'clock person who's saying it's over is going to be the fastest to swing up to when they're sold and probably become your best raving fan and client. So a little bit backwards, but I wanted to share this with you because I feel like when you catch this and you start doing it in your conversations, you are going to win at such a higher level that you will close way more deals than you ever thought necessary. So lastly, again, just remember reverses and negative reverses are probably the two most common, most best uses for being a sales professional. When somebody asks you a question, if it's not going to hurt you or help you reverse it before you answer. When somebody's hostile and they're bringing emotion, it, you understand you need to recognize is it positive or negative emotion and wherever that person is your job is to be slightly more negative than what they are and that is where the negative reverses come in and guess what you're going to go fight, win, and close a tremendous amount of more deals. With that said, I hope this one helped you. I know um, it's really valuable for me. It took me a long time to master this, but when I mastered it, whew, boy, I got it, right? And so, Tom, I hope that, again, your question here was, um, you know, you have prospects to say they're going to buy and never do. That's why it's the momentum. It's the pendulum theory. And then those negative ones that become your best client. Again, uh, momentum and pendulum theory. Uh, so we had a quick comment. Um, Louise says this. She says, I learned so much from you every live or video you do. Oh, thank you, Louise. I dearly love you. You're amazing. Thank you for being here today. And that's it for today. Don't forget to smash that like button and share this out to those people that need it. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 500 subs. I know it's a small channel on YouTube right now, but it's growing and it's just a passion project for me. So with that said, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget Thursday is the best day statistically to prospect and to close deals. So go fight, win, get it done. And we will talk with you next time. Ciao for now.